The Lang Sun campaign was a major French offensive in Tonkin during the Sino-French War. The Tonkin Expeditionary Corps, under the command of General Louis Briere de Lisle, defeated the Chinese Guangxi Army and captured the strategically important town of Lang Sun in a 10-day campaign mounted under formidable logistical constraints. Campaign Preparations January 1885 French strategy in Tonkin was the subject of a bitter debate in the Chamber of Deputies in late December 1884. The Army Minister General Jean-Baptiste Marie Campenon argued that the French should consolidate their hold on the Delta. His opponents urged an all-out offensive to throw the Chinese out of northern Tonkin. The debate culminated in Campenon's resignation and his replacement as Army Minister by the hawkish General Jules Lewell. On 5 January 1885 Lewell ordered Briere de Lisle to capture Lang Sun as soon as possible. Long-range planning for a campaign against Lang Sun had been underway for several months, and Briere de Lisle had already assembled large French forces at the French forward base at on the Luc Nam River, which had been occupied by the French in the wake of the Kep campaign. On 3 and 4 January 1885 General de Negri attacked and defeated a substantial detachment of the Guangxi army that had concentrated around the nearby village of Nui Bob to try to disrupt the French preparations. De Negri's victory at Nui Bop, won at odds of just under 1 to 10, was regarded by his fellow officers as the most spectacular professional triumph of his career. Logistical arrangements for the Lang Sun campaign were formidable. It would take the column around 10 days to advance to the outskirts of Lang Sun. The troops would be burdened with the weight of their provisions and equipment, and would have to march through extremely difficult country. The nights in Tonkin in February would be bitterly cold. Supplying the column with food and ammunition would tax the ingenuity of the marine infantry officers responsible for the mule trains and the coolies. It took the French a month to complete their preparations for the campaign, but by the end of January 1885, Briere de Lisle had assembled an expeditionary column of just under 7,200 troops, accompanied by 4,500 coolies, a Chu, French high command, Lang Sun campaign, General Louis Briere de Lisle, General François de Negrier, Colonel Ange Laurent Giovanni Nelly. French order of battle. The Lang Sun Expeditionary Column was organized around the two brigades originally established by General Millet in January 1885. Each brigade contained two marching regiments, each of two or three battalions, with supporting artillery and Tonkinese skirmishes, and was accompanied by field hospital and engineering detachments. Giovanni Nelly's 1st Brigade consisted of a 2-battalion Marine Infantry Regiment, a 2-battalion Regiment of Algerian Riflemen, a battalion of Tonkinese Riflemen and 3 artillery batteries. De Negri's 2nd Brigade consisted of a French Regiment of 3-line Infantry Battalions from the Metropolitan Army, an Algerian Regiment of 2 Foreign Legion Battalions and 1 Battalion of African Light Infantry a battalion of Tonkinese riflemen and three artillery batteries. 1st Brigade 1st Marching Regiment Marine Infantry Battalion Marine Infantry Battalion 2nd Marching Regiment 3rd Battalion 3rd Algerian Rifle Regiment 4th Battalion 1st Algerian Rifle Regiment 1st Battalion 2nd Tonkinese Rifle Regiment Brigade Artillery 3rd, 4th and 5th Marine Artillery Batteries BIS 2nd Brigade 3rd Marching Regiment 23rd Line Infantry Battalion 111th Line Infantry Battalion 143rd Line Infantry Battalion 4th Marching Regiment 2nd Foreign Legion Battalion 3rd Foreign Legion Battalion 2nd African Light Infantry Battalion 1st Battalion 1st Tonkinese Rifle Regiment Brigade Artillery 1st Marine Artillery Battery BIS 11th and 12th Batteries 12th Army Artillery Regiment 
the strengths of the infantry battalions varied considerably, depending on how long they had been in Tonkin. The battalions which had served longest in the Tonkin campaign could only with difficulty field as many as 500 men. While Scherfer and Komoy's recently arrived battalions could put 800 rifles into line. The Lang Sun Campaign, February 1885, capture of Khao Niat, the 3rd of February shortly after midnight on the 2nd of February the Expeditionary Corps set off from Chu, with De Negri's 2nd Brigade leading the way, and advanced over the mountain of Diavanta Khao Niat without meeting any enemy resistance. At Khao Niat, the French captured an important Chinese rice dump, easing their supply difficulties. Battle of Tehoa, the 4th of February. On the 4th of February, the Expeditionary Corps fought its first action with the Chinese at Tehoa. The battle was fought almost wholly by De Negri's 2nd Brigade, which was leading the march, and demonstrated the unfitness for field command of Lieutenant Colonel Paul Gustav Herbinger, the French commander who would in late March 1885 give the controversial order for the retreat from Lang San, order to capture the Great Fort, the key to the Chinese position, with his three French line battalions. Herbinger made an elaborate flank march which exhausted his troops and wasted valuable time. At length, seeing his operational timetable threatened, De Negria ordered Scherfer's 3rd Legion Battalion to take the fort instead. The legionnaires scrambled rapidly up the mountain paths towards the Chinese position and captured it under Herbinger's nose. Meanwhile, on the other side of the battlefield, Captain Graveros Company of Digay's 2nd Legion Battalion was isolated and surrounded by the Chinese. The company was eventually disengaged by its comrades but suffered heavy losses. Although the battle was indisputably a French victory, French casualties were disconcertingly heavy. 18 dead and 101 wounded, most of them in Digay and Scherfer's Legion battalions. These were the heaviest casualties the French had suffered in a single engagement since the start of the Sino-French War. Actions at Ha Hoa and Dong Song. 5 and 6 February On 5 February the French assaulted the main complex of forts defending the Chinese entrenched camp at Dong Song, around Ha Hoa. The two French brigades attacked side by side. The 1st Brigade, on the left, overran a number of Chinese forts before their defenders could escape, and wiped out the garrisons by blowing in the roofs with dynamite. The 2nd Brigade, on the right, captured the principal Chinese work of Pins Parasols, so named because it had been built around a conspicuous clump of umbrella pines. The speed of the French attacks, prepared by artillery, kept the Chinese off balance throughout the battle, and French casualties were relatively low, four dead and 18 wounded. On 6 February the French fought a morning action to clear the Chinese from their last defences before Dong Song and took possession of the entrenched camp of Dong Song in the afternoon. French casualties in this action were three dead and 41 wounded. Brie de Lisle had been hoping to push the Chinese back across the mountain of Doquao into the Song Tong Valley, away from Lang Sun, but most of the Chinese troops fell back up the Dong Song Valley to Fobu, where they could make a further stand for Lang Sun. Action at Doquao, the 9th of February, the capture of Dong Song threatened the supply line of the Guangxi Army's right wing at Ba Sila, and the Chinese hastily pulled back from Ba Sila and retreated up the Mandarin Road to Than Moi. To cover their retreat, they attacked the French outposts on the mountain of Doquao on the 9th of February. The French units on Doquao easily repelled this attack but the diversion allowed the Guangxi army to regroup and make a final stand in front of Lang Sun. Action at Fo Vy The 11th of February after a pause for breath at Dong Song to resupply with food and ammunition and to establish a shorter supply line back to Chu across the mountain of Dioquan. 
The Tonkin Expeditionary Corps pressed on towards Langsun. On the 11th of February the 2nd Brigade, at the head of the French column, contacted advance elements of the Guangxi Army at Fo Vy. The Chinese were ejected from the village of Fo Vy by herbing as three French battalions with little difficulty, but they brought up their reserves and mounted a counter-attack against Herbinger's regiment which forced De Negrier to commit Degas Legion Battalion to drive them off. Towards the end of the battle the 111th Battalion stormed a Chinese hill position under the eyes of the rest of the brigade. Second Lieutenant René Normand, who fell a month later in the Battle of Bangbo and whose letters from Tonkin were published after his death, distinguished himself in this action. Towards evening the Chinese fell back on their main body at Bacvi. French casualties at Fovy were slight. A total of one dead and 23 wounded. Giovanni Nelly's 1st Brigade was leading the French column, and De Negri's 2nd Brigade took little part in the battle. In a costly but successful assault, Giovanni Nelly's Turcos and Marine infantry stormed the Chinese defences. The battle was fought in thick fog, allowing the Chinese to mount a dangerous counter-attack at one point that nearly swept away part of Giovanni Nelly's brigade. Eventually the French broke through the Chinese center, and the isolated Chinese wings retreated in disorder back to Langsun. French casualties at BAC Vi were 30 dead and 188 wounded, the highest casualties of the campaign. Most of these casualties were sustained by the two Turco battalions in Giovanni Nelly's brigade, which had borne the brunt of the battle. Chef d'Escadron Leverett, the 1st Brigade's artillery commander, was shot dead during the battle, and Briere de Lyle's officer d'Ordonnance 2nd Lieutenant Bossant, the son of a senior French general, was killed at Briere de Lyle's side. Capture of Langsun and action at Kentucky Lua, the 13th of February. On the 13th of February, the French column entered Langsun, which the Chinese abandoned after fighting a token rearguard action at the nearby village of Kentucky Lua. In complement to their performance at BAC Vi, Briere de Lisle gave Giovanni Nelly's Turcos and Marine Infantry the honor of leading the French entry into Langsun. The Guangxi army fell back towards the Chinese border and occupied a strong defensive position at Dongdang, a small town just in Tonkinese territory. Orders of the day. Briere de Lisle issued two orders of the day during the Langsun campaign. The first, issued on 7 February, marks the capture of the Chinese entrenched camp of Dong Song. Les formidables camps retranchesta ha hoa aida Dong Song sont entre vos mains avec dimenses approvisionnements dumb. The munitions aida vivre que votre LNNA par permissile and ami d'emporter. Pendant les combats des 4, 5 a 6 février. Qui vous ont rendus maîtres de ces admirables positions sur les squelles LARME acute each a noise of eight compte pour now spara les débouches du diovan et du dio quan a now sinta dia les roots du then moire de lang sun. Vous avez égalé les troupes les plus CIT acutes dans les annales de LARME acute française. Vous avez ajouté une belle page in notre histoire nationale. Honneur à vos chefs et à vous. Vous approchez de terme de votre mission. Des combats, des privations et des fatigues vous attendent encore. Les vertus militaires, don't vous avez de la donne tant de provis, garantissent le succès de l'avenir. The second order of the day, issued on the 14th of February, marks the capture of Lang Sun. Vous avez arbor et le drapeau français sur Lang Sun. Une arme acute each a noise dix voice plus non brus a k vu a du repasser, anti aimant en deroute, la frontière, les sont entre vos mains ces étendards, ces arms a ces munitions. Ella acute t acute reduita revu abandon our hour disperser dans les montagnes le matériel européen sur lequel elevate tant compte pour s'opposer à notre marche. 
Glowery of Utowski success of Montvoet's measure a held dans les combats du four a they hoa, du five a ha hoa, du six a dong song, du nine a d-o-q-u-a-o, du eleven a fo v-y, du twelve a b-a-c v-i-i, du thirteen a lang sun, a laves chasse, malgré sa vigoureuse resistance, des positions formidables quel occupate. Honor Ozio officers charge S de la conduita des convoys de vivre de munitions. Say grace alert de vous money alert and fatigable energy k vous avez pu vivre a canos progress nont par e acute t acute retardes plus long temps. French officers killed in action, Lang Sun campaign. Captain Graveru, 2nd Legion Battalion, 2nd Lieutenant Bossant, Marine Infantry. Aftermath, Battle of Dongdang, the 23rd of February on the 16th of February, Briere de Lisle left Lang Sun with Giovanni Nelly's 1st Brigade to relieve the siege of Tu Yen Quang. Before his departure he ordered General de Negria, who would remain at Lang Sun with the 2nd Brigade, to press on towards the Chinese border and expel the battered remnants of the Guangxi army from Tonkinese soil. After resupplying the 2nd Brigade with food and ammunition, de Negria advanced to attack the Guangxi army at Dongdang. On 23 February de Negria stormed the Chinese defences at Dongdang, forcing the Chinese to retreat towards towards the Chinese border town of Longzhou. After clearing the Chinese from Tonkinese territory the French crossed briefly into Guangxi province and on 25 February blew up the Gate of China, an elaborate Chinese customs building on the border at Zhenan Pass. They were not strong enough to exploit this victory, however, and De Negria returned to Lang Sun with the bulk of the 2nd Brigade at the end of February. A small French garrison under the command of Lieutenant Colonel Herbinger was left at Dongdang to watch the movements of the Guangxi army. Three weeks later the Chinese attacked the Dongdang garrison, precipitating a series of events that led to the French defeat of the Battle of Bangbo.